Here I'm starting out with five pounds of clay and I'm drilling down into the hole to open it up with my palm. I find this easier on my hands uh, for some reason. Anyway, I'm pushing down and out to open it up. I'm trying to make a um, shallow bowl here with a flat bottom. So as I push down, I'm pushing out while bracing the rim. I'm also checking the thickness with my needle tool as I go. So I'm adding a lot of water to this technique because it requires that. So I'm just kind of compressing and pushing and feeling the clay with my palm um, to make sure there aren't any more, you know, lumps or anything. I'm using a wooden rib to really compress the bottom now. Um, so now I'm pulling up the sides. And I'm realizing that the bottom, I went way too thin on the bottom. Uh, so I decided to drill a hole down to the bat because it was already thin. And now I'm just pulling, pulling it out, pulling it towards me and figuring, hey, I'll see what happens here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm just pulling that out as it connects to the other wall, I'm compressing and pushing those two walls in together to squeeze any air out of it. And I can feel some air bubbles that I'm popping along the way. And now I'm just gonna keep pulling this up until it looks like a good thickness for casserole, which casserole should be very thick because it retains the heat really well when you're cooking. So, hey, this will turn into a casserole. So the next day, I cut this off the bat and turned it into an oval shape just by gently pressing the two sides together. And I rolled out a slab, so I'm now attaching a bottom to it. I'm slipping and scoring to get a good attachment. I'm just gonna slip and score both pieces, the bottom of the casserole, you'll notice there's a nice thick bottom there that will attach nicely to the base of the casserole. So here I'm just finagling it onto the slab exactly where I want it, the shape I want it, and I am drawing out a line uh, around the, the base and then cutting it off. And now I'm smoothing and merging the two. This you want to do really well because you do not want any gaps or cracks there in the drying process. So I'm using um, a wooden tool to help me out here and to make it look smooth and even. There we go. Now I'm compressing the inside, just joining the two. And I rolled out a small coil just for extra protection to uh, put along the base there where the two seams meet. So I will be adding the coil and then smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. Again, this footage is all in like five times speed. Otherwise it'd be like 40 minutes long. So 
the process will take a little bit longer, obviously. I also ruled out um, a thicker coil just to make these two handles with. So I'm again gonna slip and score looking where I want to put the handle, which to me on the most circular narrow part of the pot. And I'm just really getting a good attachment there and smoothing that big honking coil onto the, the base. I wanted it thick because my husband cooks and his hands are enormous, so figured he'd appreciate this, <laughs> that handle. Um, so now I'm just trying to line up the, the next handle to make sure it's exactly even with the other side. The calipers are great to do this with. And here's the finished piece, all done. A failed pot turned into a beautiful casserole. Time to get into the kiln.